Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I want to show you why Lightroom is so awesome. I just came back from a big trip all over Europe, uh, Paris, south of France, Tuscany, Florence, and I want to show you some of the best retouching I've done with some of the photos. I find Lightroom gets better and better, and it's really an amazing weapon. If you shoot raw, if you underexpose your photo, you can really get the best out of the situation and turn a photo that you might think is boring into something amazing. You need to be able to master Lightroom like an expert. If you want to become a better exposed photographer or more successful photographer, using Lightroom is a vital tool. So stay until the end of this video. I really believe in 2019 it is the best time for you to become a star as a photographer and I will do everything that I can with my YouTube channel to help you. Alright, so let's get started. We're going to start off with this beautiful photo of uh, Paris shot from the Tour Montparnasse. And I want to show you if you're not familiar with the power of life from what you can do. So on this one, I'm going to open up the shadows because I want to see what's going on here in the streets of Paris. Look how sharp this photo is. I shot this with the Sony A7R II. Then I'm going to bring on the highlights. And the next thing I'm going to do is hold on the option key. Very important, you hold on the option key and I'm going to crush my blacks. Okay, I want about 2 or 3% of the photo to be pure black because I love this kind of dramatic, strong photos. Okay, then I'm going to do the same thing with the white. But when it comes to city light, I don't want to go like this. I want to go just at the threshold like this. Just a little bit of light. Okay, now once you've done the shadows, the highlights, the black and the white, that's when you have to jump into the white balance. So, white balance, because you should row, you've got different setups. I can check out daylight. Daylight is going to be very warm, very blue, which is kind of cool. You can go cloudy and cloudy is going to be a bit warmer. But see what happens when I go for, check this out. When I'm in daylight, you see how the sky is blue and then I go to cloudy and now it's like grayish. There's no more colors. Even worse, if I go to shade, it's going to be different because it takes all the blue. Now on this one, I, there was a really cool sunset. So I'm going to go to daylight because I want to go from blue to warm. And that's something is new to me. I used to be able to go to shade and add magenta all the time. Now I might add a little bit of magenta because when you have an addiction like I do with magenta, you don't stop it every day. And by the way, guys, if you can take a minute and like this video and leave me a comment, tell me what you would like to learn, say hello, say anything. I read every single comment. But if you can take a second and smash, destroy that like button, it is amazing. Thank you so much. It helps me make two videos per week. All right, so now what can we do to make this sky really pop? This is when the local tools in Lightroom are amazing because here you've got different settings that can be applied gradually. So I can go here, for example, click and drag, and now I can lower my exposure. And you see, uh, basically from the top here to the first line, the value of my exposure is being applied 100%. And then it goes on a gradient. So I can make my gradient small, I can make it big, I can move the whole gradient and all I'm trying to do is maybe add a bit of blue and maybe a bit some minus clarity. So that's what amazing with local tools is you can mix up different sliders into one gradient. So exposure, clarity, maybe add a bit of saturation, you know, lower the clarity. This is such an amazing software. Okay, I think I want to lower the exposure a little more to close the photo. And now I'm going to add a bit of contrast because I can. I think the whole city is a little too blue, but I don't want to change the color of the sky. So what can you do? Well, you can make what we call a local white balance adjustment. Yes, it's crazy. Take the gradient again. This time you go and choose, for example, temperature. Temperature is the white balance. I'm going to make it warmer. Okay. And I'm going to click and drag just to the bottom of the photo. And what do I want to do for the bottom? I want to make it warmer. I want to make it more magenta and I want to add more clarity. I do not like, and I want to add sharpening. I don't like to add sharpening and clarity on all the photo, but at the beginning, it's good. Okay, now I might make the photo a little bit darker and I'm going to go here, click and drag and use one of these beautiful gradients here. So anything that you do here is going to appear now in the circle. That's crazy. And if you double click on effect, everything comes down to zero. What do I want to do in that circle? I want to add some yellow. I'm going to overdo it at first. You can really see what I'm doing and add some magenta to really make my sunsets pop. But I don't want it to go over the city here. So check this out. I can go to range mask off, go to luminance and move this slider to the right 
so that it only affects the sky. And because I've overdone it, when you use the luminous mask, it makes the whole value go less strong. So now it's pretty well balanced. And if you want to see the before and after, just click on before and after. Okay, now I can click on done. If you want to see the before and after, you just click on the backslash key. That's the before, boring. That's the after, amazing. But it doesn't stop here. Now comes the, the magic trick. I'm going to take a brush here. I'm going to go to exposure, add some exposure, add some clarity, and I'm doing the British accent, but I can also do the French one if you want. And then I'm going to brush here on the little avenue of Paris to make it glow. So remember, when you add clarity and exposure, what happens, actually, sorry, minus clarity, not plus clarity, it makes things glow. I want to make the streets of Paris glow. Maybe even add more saturation to them. Maybe add even more yellow. So I'm adding yellow. I'm adding exposure. I'm adding clarity. I'm adding saturation. It doesn't stop. It's crazy. Okay. And voila. Before, after. That's the power of, uh, of Lightroom. Now, I want to show you another one I really like from my trip. It's the famous Lapin Gilles. If you ever get a chance to go to Montmartre, um, it was just at the light we're turning on. It was very early in the evening. Uh, and that's what I love is... Panoramas. I select all the four photos that I did. I right click, photo merge, panorama, and you got different projections of panorama. And so you have perspective, which I don't want to use on this one. You have cylindrical, which is way better for this one. And you have spherical. It's just different way of stitching the photos, of putting them together. Okay. And you can even use this boundary warp here to boost this to the right, but sometimes it does something weird to, to the building. So in this case, I don't, want, I don't want to do it. So if I've already done it to go faster and it's here, that's the final panorama. Look at the size of the file. This is 10,757 pixels wide. You can put a poster over an entire subway station with so much pixel. It's crazy. Okay, how am I going to retouch this? Well, here comes the magic. Uh, I'm going to bring on the highlights because I remember there was like a bit of red in the sky. You can hardly see it, but it's there. I'm going to boost the shadows and then I'm going to do the black point, just like what I've done so far and the white point. Okay. Usually I like to do that. And then, um, I think I'm going to really underexpose this photo and I'm going to relight it. I love to underexpose photos and then bring them back to light. It's crazy. I'm going to take the crop tool. I think I want to crop here. I want to crop there. I don't like the yellow lines, but crop here and maybe crop here and boom, I'm ready onto the subject. I still have a lot of pixel, 10,000 almost pixels wide, still crazy. And now most of the work gets done with the local adjustment tool. If you're only doing global adjustment to your photo, you are missing out on something. I cannot tell you how many photography challenges, how many work I got because I use the brushes the gradients and the circle. It's crazy. I usually use all three on a photo. So now what can we do on this one? Well, let's take care of the sky first. Maybe make it a little bit brighter. I'm going to go here and I'm going to make the sky a bit darker as usual. So I, I underexposed the photo, but you see now it does that also on the buildings. I kind of don't like that. Maybe add a bit of magenta and then I'm going to go. So I always overdo it because when you use a range mask off, it's going to take out a lot of its power. You see, uh, if I go here, now I'm making a bit the sky a bit darker here. I think it's a little too much. So I'm just going to back this down. I want to get, I want to do another gradient here for the bottom of the photo, just to make uh, the um, cobblestone a little darker. Voila, click on down. Uh, but it, the photo still lacks of magic to me. So I'm going to use a gradient, the radial gradient. I'm going to go here, make a, and, and look where, uh, the, the Lapin Gilles sign was, I'm going to double click on effect to turn on everything off and I'm just going to open up the shadows, maybe boost a little bit the exposure. Okay. Bring down the highlights because I don't want it to be too bright. I just want it to be, to be a bit more bright. And usually when I have something that I like, I right click, I duplicate and I put another one maybe here, just whether maybe here. Now this one is too strong. So I'm going to back down the shadows but you see it makes the photo a little more interesting don't go too much on it you really have to go close to where there is light so here there was some light so i'm going to lower yeah not boost it as much 
but just a little bit. And if you want to see what a local adjustment did, well, you can just go here and see the before and the after. I mean, it makes the entire photo, you see, but it has to be realistic, you know. Uh, we can think that there is some lights coming and shining everywhere here. Okay, now usually when that's done, I want to take care of the sky. The sky is a little boring to me. So what I'm going to do is take a brush. Okay, I'm going to double click on effect to put everything down to zero, add a bit of exposure. Uh, but this time I want to make sure the flow and density is really low, like in the 50s. And then with the middle mouse, with the middle mouse here, up and down, I can make my brush small or big. I'm going to make it very small and I'm going to brush. Check this out. I'm going to brush like a painter on the clouds, on the clouds to uh, give it more details. You know, where, wherever there is some white, I'm just painting there and it's just making them like more coming out. But because I have a brush at 50, it's not that visible. Let me show you the before and after the brush. Before, after. And if you think it's too visible, you can just lower a little bit and it's just, it just goes a long way. Now, I want to add some more warmth to the sky. So I'm going to click a new brush. I'm going to add a bit of yellow, a bit of magenta, make it a bit bigger. I'm still having a very low value, like in the 50s. And I just want to add, you see, wherever it's kind of warm, I want to add some more color here. Okay, it's not doing very much. So I'm going to increase the flow and density. And then I'm going to increase the yellow and the magenta and the saturation. And I just want to add a little bit more color, not too much but just a little bit more because I find that this raw file is not giving justice. There was a lot of colors in the sky and it's like a little gone to me. Okay, so I'm painting. Now there's one thing I don't like about the sky. I think it's too HDRE. Okay, it's a little strong there and my computer is lagging. I need to get a new MacBook Pro. Uh, all right, that's good, that's good, that's good. Now I wanna add one more circle. I always wanna have something that gives depth to the photo. So um, you know what? I'm going to add one more circle here where the sunset was setting here and I'm um, not making so strong but I want the eyes to go here and uh, and voila backslash key to see where we stand before after before after doesn't that blow your mind don't you want to get Lightroom right now you got to be an expert at Lightroom it's going to change your life all right, let's just finish it off. Maybe I add a little bit of a vibrance to it and a little bit of saturation to make it really pop. I'm loving this photo. And if you think it's too saturated, you can just lower the saturation. I like crazy saturation. I think this is a little too crazy. So I'm going to double click, you know, take off saturation, just add a bit of vibrance to it. But yeah, that's good enough. Okay, I want to show you a couple of more projects why I love Lightroom. You know, sometimes I come to like a beautiful village in Italy and the sky is just boring, but I think it could be a cool black and white photo. So you know what? I go straight to black and white. I click on here on black and white and then it looks very flat to me, but that's when the magic comes. So I'm going to bring on the highlights. Ooh, we start seeing some sky. I'm going to do my black point. I'm going to do my white point. I'm going to add some contrast, but I need to make this sky pop a lot. So I'm going to take a gradient here. I'm going to lower the exposure and look at this. I really want to make a crazy sky like a Frankenstein you know, sky. And then I'm going to make another gradient here. So now I'm really closing in on the photo. Okay. And as I said, local adjustment tool is the secret guys. I want to make this photo a little more straight. So let's see what happens if you go to um, the transform and you click on auto. Good things happen. It's more straight. And now I'm going to take a same thing, a radial circle here. I'm going to add a little bit of exposure, not too much. Try not to go over like 0, 50, 0, 60. I'm going to add clarity and then, yeah, this is too much. I'm going to not add some yellow and some magenta, just a little bit of that. Yeah, it doesn't work here. And I want to maybe just put it here. Yeah, it's still too much. Is there something else? Yeah, it's the clarity that's too much. I'm going to add a bit of clarity and I like this. I'm going to duplicate it, maybe put it here. And this is going very slow to me. I mean, all of that I could do in a few seconds. But check it out before boring into amazing dramatic black and white. Uh, I think I want to add here another gradient, but the other side, because I want to make this darker. You see the eyes go through the brightest part of the photo and I think that wall is too bright. So uh, I'm going to make it uh, maybe boost, boost on the highlight to make it more grayish. Okay. I can also take a brush and just uh, um, double click here on effect, add a bit of exposure, 
make sure flowing density is in the 70s and I can brush here and there just to put some interest on the photo you know something like this and check it out before after before after crazy uh, last one last little trick that I really love this was in Saint Jean Cap Ferrat in the Mediterranean Sea when you have a photo like this where you have like one element that's very orange and everything else or a very specific color everything else is blue I'll show you a trick that I show sometimes but some people seem to enjoy it I'm gonna open the shadows bring down the highlights do the black do the white but then I'm gonna add some contrast then I'm gonna go into the hue and saturation and I'm gonna boost the saturation of the red boost the saturation of the orange boost the saturation of the yellow and then I'm gonna kill the greens kill the aqua kill the blue clear the purple and kill the magenta and now we got a selective color there's still some uh, warmth here so you can take a brush and you put it all the way flow intensity to 100 okay I'm gonna double click the effect and I'm gonna go minus saturation and you just brush whenever you know wherever you see that there is still some red left and you have to do it twice because I, you boosted the saturation you have to do it twice so one time you click on new same brush and you and you do it a second time and now everything is black and white except that boat but that's not all I'm gonna go here I'm gonna do my little uh, classic gradient double click on effect lower the exposure really strong I want to make it like a very strong black and white voila maybe uh, make another gradient here not so much back it down but just a bit here so it aligns with the boat all right all right all right add a bit of contrast uh, yes a little bit of contrast I'm gonna take a brush and on this brush I'm gonna add a little bit of exposure and I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, white here so that the eyes goes to the brighter spot of the photo like inside of the photo maybe a little bit more here and now we got a dramatic black and white selfie photos in a few seconds uh, backslash key to see the before and the after Lightroom is really awesome now check out my best tips on how to make it as a fine art artist I struggle so much but I found a few tricks along the way check it out